So to start us off here, Ms. Gelfand, you referred to a number of risks in the area of salmon farming, the escapes from fish farms and so on. Of those risk factors that you found in this audit, which one is the most serious in your view? I think it's difficult for me as, a, as an auditor to tell you which one is most serious. I would say there are several um, risks that are of grave concern. And I would say fish escapes is one of the, the great risks. The use of medication and pesticides is a second big risk. And then diseases would be probably the third big risk. But I'll just see if Sharon wants to add anything to that. Yes, I would agree. There are several risks in how aquaculture or salmon farming is being regulated by the federal government, including use of drugs and pesticides to combat diseases and pathogens that arise when you have a large number of fish in, in a small area, such as a fish farm. And so those are two of the main risks, as well as the possibility of fish escapes and when, if and when fish escape, they can spread disease and they can also have a genetic risk of interbreeding, especially in the Atlantic. And they can also be, um, if they escape, they can also be a risk from a, pr from a, a predation for food. They can become mm -hmm. a, a competitor with the wild fish for food. So that's another risk that, that, uh, that, we, that we can talk about. But it's difficult for me to tell you which one of these is the most important. They're all important. Mm -hmm. As part of this series of audit, you, uh, you did something a little uh, unusual in that you looked at a program that has a sunset clause of 2030, and you looked at whether Canada, 12 years out, is actually ready to move, and you found that, uh, that we aren't. Were you surprised by that? Because when we look at the biodiversity audit, we see that it's kind of the same thing. Long, long range to execute, and as the deadline draws near, uh, things fall off. So what we looked at in the, um, in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals audit was whether or not the country was prepared to implement a plan to achieve those goals. And this is part of a an international effort. Auditors generals from around the world are planning to assess their government's preparedness to implement. So we looked at seven things that all the auditors generals from around the world are thinking about. Um, has the government indicated their, that they are engaged and they take responsibility? Do they have the resources? Do they have a, a communication and a mobilization or engagement plan with the public? Um, do they have an actual plan, targets, um, that they're going to achieve? And then there's three that are kind of on the data side, which are um, related to whether we have a system to measure um, and monitor and report on those indicators. So generally, we're not, impl we're not auditing whether or not they're going to achieve those goals. We're auditing whether or not they're ready to, uh, are they prepared to implement? Kim? Yeah, um, so we, we weren't expecting um, departments to be ready to, to implement. We were expecting them to be prepared. And this is in accordance, as Julie said in her opening statement, with, um, with audits that are being conducted around the world. There's over 80 countries uh, that are doing similar type audits and that are expecting similar things from their governments in terms of the seven things that Julie outlined. So, so we did expect the government to be prepared to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. And one other thing we can add is that our office is going to be, f on behalf of all the auditors generals from around the world, mm -hmm. we're going to be actually reporting back to the United Nations on all of these preparedness audits. So we could tell you a little bit, I know we could talk a little bit, um, uh, for example, we just received one from Costa Rica. Sharon was just in Costa Rica last week uh, helping to train uh, auditors. Uh, but the uh, Auditor General of Costa Rica has done an audit on whether or not their government is prepared to implement. There's probably other governments that have done it as well. Yeah, even, even in uh, South America, there's uh, 14 countries that did a collaborative audit on whether or not they had achieved the sustainable development or whether they were prepared to, to uh, implement the sustainable development goals. There's other work going on in, in all in all. In all continents, both collaborative work as well as, uh, as individual countries looking at, uh, looking at um, their preparedness. And as Julie said, we are going to be responsible to roll this all up into, into um, 
some information that we're going to present to the high-level political forum, which is going to be in uh, July of 2019. And unlike our government, we've read the 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 uh, review from the Netherlands uh, mm -hmm. Court of Auditors, and they got uh, check marks in seven out of seven of their uh, of the that list that we were looking at. While as in Canada, we could give, you know, maybe one and a half check marks uh, out of seven. Hopefully that answers that question. So maybe on this idea of uh, comparison, since you mentioned that you've, you're aware of work going on in other countries, can you maybe give us a sense of where Canada is at? Is everyone else struggling or are we just behind the pack here? As it's really difficult to say that at this point. Um, as I said, the Netherlands uh, got you know almost a perfect score. Um, there are so many audits that are happening right now um, and as we speak, that it's difficult for us to tell you how we're doing compared to the rest of the world. In fact, we thought we'd be one of the first audits out of the gate. Um, and then we found out that there were audits happening all around the world already and that they, they may have even uh, been uh, tabled before ours. So at this point in time, I'd say it's a little early, but uh, definitely by next summer, we'll be able to um, uh, give you a better sense of how Canada fits in vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. 